Customizing your outline within SRS is really simple. All you have to do is click on your SRS actor, head to the General tab and navigate to Outlines. Here you will find an array called Outline Types. This array handles all your outlines in your scene. You can add up to 25 different outline types to this array. By default there is already one created called Default. If you wish to modify this, you could for example increase the thickness of this outline. Or you can modify the color. You could also, if you have a color you want, modify the alpha value. This makes the outline a bit translucent, as you can see right here. For now I'm going to leave this outline at black though. Next up, I'm going to add another outline type by pressing this plus right here. Th this will add a new outline type to our scene. For this outline type, I want to set the color to a bright blue, an emissive blue by setting the velocity to 100, and I'm going to increase the size to 3. And this outline type, I only want to be visible when you're looking at these spheres through walls. For this I'm going to disable visible when on line of sight, so now it won't be visible at all, and I'm going to enable visible when obstructed. So now if I move behind the wall you will see that this outline type become this outline type becomes visible. Now however I want to create another outline type that is only for certain selected objects in our scene. In order to do this what, I, what you can do is you can add another outline type and you have we have to now modify the stencil mask low and stencil mask high value. On all of your objects in your scene, if you search for custom depth, you will find this custom depth stencil value. This is a value from 0 to 255 that you can give to any object and SRS is going to use this object, to uh, this value, to determine which outline type this object is going to receive. I'm going to set this to 1, as all others by default have this value at 0. Now we have to head to our SRS actor and navigate back to the outlines. And now the two outline types we created previously. I'm going to set it so that they only work with stencil mask values um, in the range of 0 to 0, so only 0 is going to be affected. And now for our third outline type that we just created, I'm going to set this to only affect um, objects with a stencil value of 1. Now I'm going to set this to be a bright red and have a higher thickness. If we want our character to have this outline, all we have to do is navigate to our character and search for custom depth and set the stencil value to 1. Now, what we can do now is create outlines, but for some effects you may want to create a fill-in. In order to do this, you have to click on the SRS actor and create another outline type. I'm going to call this fill-in. The name is simply for organizational purposes. It does not have an effect on how it's rendering. And I'm going to set the color to a cyan. Something like this. And I'm going to make it so it's only visible when it's obstructed. And now we'll have to head down to the advanced panel. Here we have to set the minimum depth difference to a value s lower than zero, so to a negative value. And now if we look at this object, or all objects for that matter, from behind walls, you will see that there is a fill-in created. Note that translucent objects do not create outlines. If you're wondering why this sphere or our character uh, do not have these blue outlines, it is because we set our blue outline type to only affect zero um, stencil value zero. 
if we set the stencil mask high to 1, it will once again affect all objects. For this next part, I'm going to make it so our blue outline only affects, or blue fill in only affects um, stencil values from 0 to 1. So I'm going to set these two values to 0 and 1. And I'm going to create a new stencil, a new outline type, which is going to affect everything from 2 to 255. And I'm going to set this to a bright white and increase the thickness. Now we only need to select the sphere and set the custom depth value to 2 for example. And now we have a white outline. With this I'm going to demonstrate some more advanced settings for outlines. If you click on the advanced tab right here, some more options will appear. First, we're going to focus on opacity over distance. If you expand this, you will see four parameters. These control the opacity based on how far your camera is from the object. By default, the opacity does not change. However, you could make it so the outline is only visible when your camera is at a certain distance from the object. For this, we want the outline to fade in at a distance of, let's say, 1 meter, so 100 units and be fully faded in at a distance of 2 meters. And now if we move our camera to the object, the outline disappears, and if we move away, the outline appears. We can also make our outline fade out, so let's say the, out the fading out will start at 3 meters and be fully faded out at 4 meters. So now if we are very close to the object, there won't be an outline visible, if we move away, an outline will be visible, and then if we move away even further, it will disappear once again. This, of course, works for fill-in as effect as well. I'm going to increase the size where this outline is visible, as we're going to use it to demo a few other effects you can do in the advanced tab. So now if we, I set it so it starts fading out at 10 meters. There is also the scale over distance uh, category right here. This makes it so our outline sh slightly shrinks in size as we move away. So outlines don't get too big. If you set this end scale value to 1, you might be able to see the how our outline becomes slightly too big. The scale of distance works the following. At the scale fade start, the, ob the outline has a thickness that is has the default thickness. And at the distance uh, given by scale fade end, the thickness will be scaled by this value. So now there are only two parameters left. First, we have the min depth difference. This is interesting if you have multiple spheres, for example. If you look at them side by side, you will see there is an outline in this, in this part, right there where the spheres are overlapping, you could say. If we increase our minimum depth difference to a value of, let's say, a thousand, there won't be an outline there. This is because our the outliner um, compares the distance to the camera from this pixel to these pixels and sees that the distance the difference in the distance isn't as um, isn't bigger than this value so the outline will be hidden. If we lower this value you will see that the outline becomes more frequent more frequent on parts like this. If we set our character to have this stencil value, if we take a look at our character and modify the minimum depth difference, you will be able to see a different effect of modifying this. So if we set this to a value like 3, you will be able to see that there is an outline on these indentations on the character. 
So a general rule of thumb is that lower minimum depth different difference gives you more detail, but may cause artifacts as you can like you can see here, while a higher minimum depth difference removes these artifacts but gives you less detail. Now lastly, we have obstructed distance th threshold. This only takes effect when visible when obstructed is set, set to true. Now let's move this sphere into the ground and and I'm going to disable visible when in line of sight. So now our own outline only shows through walls. And now you will be able to see what this last parameter does. As you can see there's a small gap right here from where the object enters the ground and the outline starts. This is because obstructed distance threshold is set to 30. If we set this to 0, the outline starts right where the sphere becomes obstructed by the floor. This parameter is used so if your character is walking through grass, for example, or his feet are, uh, the, the, your character's feet are in the ground, they do not make an outline through the walls or through through the grass, for example. So it is recommended to set this to a small value like 30 to just um, get rid of your out outlines like these when when your character's feet are in the ground or in grass or something like that. In the next part, you're going to learn how to modify the SRS actor to control the shading of your non-metallic and metallic objects.